This is Cameron Chai bringing another episode of Azo TV and today we're speaking to Eric Roof from Bruker and he's going to talk to us about the Contour GT XA. Thank you. This is the, uh, the Bruker Contour GT X8. It is a three-dimensional microscope. It's the tenth generation of this technology and what it will do is provide you with a three-dimensional image of your sample surface. The Contour GT includes a family of instruments. The X8 is really the top of the line of this family. We also make benchtop units uh, which are smaller but contain all of the optical elements. The measurement technique is based on interferometry and what we have is a light source, a white LED and a green LED and the light that approaches the sample is split at a beam splitter. Some of the light is reflected off of a reference mirror and some of the light is reflected off the sample surface. The measurement is made by scanning the subjective through focus. When the sample surface is in focus, we get the most intense fringes back at the camera. The way that the image is constructed is that each pixel in the camera records what Z height yielded the greatest intensity of the reflection. So in this way we can build a three-dimensional map of the sample surface. Now there's a couple of components to point out. First we have a turret which holds up to four objectives and the turret is motorized. We can simply switch between objectives by clicking on the software. What you can't see behind this hood is that there's another turret which holds three field of view lenses. Now these field of view lenses will multiply the magnification of the objective by a factor of two or one or 0.5. The combination of this FOV lens and this objective is going to set the lateral range of our image and also the spatial sampling for the measurement. The measurement time is typically very fast and the measurement speed is independent of the XY lateral size. The measurement speed is, is purely a function of how far this objective has to move. To give you a sense of the, the scale of the imaging that we can do, in Z we can accommodate uh, up to 10 millimeters. Laterally, our sampling size is controlled by the combination of our objectives, but we're looking at, uh, at the largest field of view on the order of 4.5 millimeters and at the smallest field of view on the order of about 30 microns. You'll notice that this sample is loaded onto a stage. This stage contains encoded motors. The positioning of the stage is controlled through the software and it can be automated. So we can set this up to do a sequence of automated measurements to collect, analyze the data automatically. Now using this automated stage, we can construct an image through stitching. And by stitching, what we do is take a series of adjacent images that have some area of overlap and we can assemble those images to form a larger field of view. So we can actually produce an image that's many, uh, many tens of millimeters. If you uh, come over this way, I'll show you the uh, stage motion and show you what's involved in loading a sample. The stage motion is all motor control. And I can simply load a sample and drive our stage back. A typical image uh, is shown here. This is of a MEMS device, and what we're looking at is a 3D rendering of the device. The software is very intuitive interface, contains all of the standard roughness parameters, R parameters, S parameters, and a wide variety of tools for making measurements of surface height, surface finish, and surface roughness. So you can see we're drawing cross-section lines through this device and we can simply measure the delta x, delta y, delta z dimensions of the feature. The instrument has a broad range of applications that cover everything from automotive parts to medical plant implants, uh, pharmaceuticals, really anything that uh, we can put under this microscope that will reflect light. Well, what's the maximum size of a scan that it, that it can accommodate? Well, the largest size scan that it can accommodate, as I mentioned, is a function of the, the optics that we're choosing here. 
the largest field of view is going to be on the order of about four and a half millimeters. Uh, and again, we can combine multiple images to create a stitched image that can really be uh, as large as as large as the stage. And what, what's the set the stage size again? So the stage size is a uh, 200 millimeter, optional 300 millimeter. And what resolution does it? Can this instrument measure down to? So for the uh, the X and Y, that's the the spatial sampling st uh, determined by the optics. In the Z, uh, it's going to depend on what fundamental imaging mode we're using. There is a PSI or phase shifting interferometry, which is sub angstrom vertical resolution. Uh, white light interferometry is on the order of a couple of nanometers in Z. All right then, Eric, if anyone wants more information about the Contour GTXA or any of the other Contour GT family of instruments, they can find that on your website. That's correct, www.brooker.com. All right, Eric, thanks very much for taking a few minutes and telling us about the Contour GTXA. Okay, thank you, Cameron.